All right, so the name of the game here is to get the x components and the y components for each of our vectors. We figured out that cosine of theta for the first triangle is going to be cosine of theta delta dAx over delta dA. And if you rearrange to get delta dAx all by itself, because that's what we need to do to get the x component for that triangle, that is the x part of the vector that goes over to the east, then we have delta dA times cosine of theta is 10 times cosine of 30 degrees. Okay? And 10 times cosine of 30 degrees, if you do your math, is... Is it 8.66? Yes. Beauty. 8.66 meters. Now we can do the same thing, and I'm going to keep my color code alive. We can do the same thing for the y component. And notice, if I want to find the opposite, that's the y component, and I know the hypotenuse and the angle, so ka or toa. I know that I want to know this opposite side that is the opposite from this angle mm -hmm. opposite hypotenuse so okay so if I say sine of theta is equal to delta d a y divided by delta d a can you see that that's going to get us this this vertical component here this y component it's just the trig ratio that gets us that side of the triangle now I'm going to move this paper up a little bit so that we're just looking at the y components get the delta d a y all by itself and you get delta d a y equals delta d a times sine of theta and then subbing in our values that's 10.0 meters times sine of theta or sine of 30 degrees again Sine of 30 degrees happens to be 0.5. That's one of those magic triangle trig identity things. Uh, so 0.5 times 10 is 5, yeah. 5.00 meters. And then we can go and we can do the same thing for the next two triangles. And if you do the same thing for the next two triangles, I'm going to do it a little bit quicker only quicker in that I'm not going to show every step because the steps are going to be exactly the same except if I go to find the x component this time notice that I've been given 40 degrees is the x component the opposite or the adjacent this time oh man so that means that every time I go to find an x component I don't get to use cos shoot I gotta use sine okay so I say sine of theta to get the x component for the second triangle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, no, opposite over hypotenuse, delta d bx, that's the opposite, over the hypotenuse, delta db, and I want to get delta dbx, that is the x component of delta db, or the x component of the second vector. So I say delta dbx is equal to delta db, times sine of theta or 10.0 meters times sine of 40 degrees and if you plunk it into your calculator you end up, un, end up getting 6.43 meters roughly we can do the same thing for the y component of that vector we can say cosine theta equals delta d b y over delta db or delta dby is equal to delta db times cos of theta or subbing in the values 10.0 meters times cos of 40 degrees is equal to 7.66 I'll slide it up 7.66 meters I'm going fast, right? Okay. For the last vector, are there any y components? No. Only x components. So if I want to write down delta d c x, so easy. What is it? 
10 meters. Yay. All right. Now, I would like to record these guys into my handy dandy little value organizer. This one right back up here that I suggested we use. And so my delta D AX, or the delta D in the X direction, was 8.66 meters. This is just to keep me organized. In the X direction for the B, it was 6.43 meters. In the X direction for the C, it was 10.0 meters. And for the Y, I can do the exact same thing. 5.00 meters, 7.63 meters, and nil. Okay. Now somebody will say, well, when I add all these guys up to find the resultant X value and the resultant Y value, really, aren't you saying delta D X resultant is delta D A X plus delta D B X <laughs> plus delta D C X? Yes, you are. And that's what you really should write down. We're just doing some bookkeeping here to make sure that we have everything that we need. Now, if I add up delta DAX plus delta DBX plus delta DCX, I have to consider which values are positive and which ones are negative. Let's go back to our picture, okay? Because this is all one problem. It's not like working in isolation here. We, and we have to have a, a conversation with our diagram. Tell me about these X components. Are any of them negative according to our reference frame of north, south, east, and west? Yes, ma'am. Um, B. Oh, no. It's the east, the x component, be careful. The x component. You're thinking the y component's negative, yeah. right? Okay, well let's address that. So the y component here is negative. It's the negative value. And I would like to put that down here in my calculations as well. That 7.66 value, I'm gonna remind myself that it's negative. Are any of the other y components negative? No, just that one. And there's going to be some people that say, well, wait a minute. Why don't we use the cast rule? Because you remember the cast rule from math class? No, what's that? Where when you have angles ranging from 0 to, to 360 degrees, using some trig ratios, the values can be negative sometimes. Is it grade 11? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's grade 11. That's why you don't remember it yet. Well, you will know it, and you'll, you'll think on it fondly. We're going to, we're going to avoid that idea. What, what we're going to use here is a conversation back and forth between the picture and our reference frame and these calculated magnitudes, okay? So this is a negative value. Now when I go to find my delta dx resultants, that's the sum of all the delta dx's, I'm just finding the sum of all these values here. So 8.66 plus 6.43 plus 10.0 meters. Add it up, figure out what the value is. 8.66 plus 6.43 plus 10.0 meters. Do you get 25.09? Okay. 25.09 meters for the resultant in the x direction. 25.09 meters. I'm just doing some bookkeeping. When I do my resultant in the y direction, I'll write that down here. Delta D y resultant. It's going to be delta D A y plus delta D B y plus delta D CY. Do I have to write this delta D CY? No. No, it's a zero value, but I like to write it because I get to stroke it out. Okay? Excuse me? Just get to cross it off. So 5.00 meters plus 7. Point, oh, not plus, minus, so plus negative 7.63 meters. What do you get? Oh, 7.66? Oh, you're right, 7.66 meters. Gives me what? 5 minus 7.66. Negative 2.66, nice. Ladies, can I ask you to? Thank you. Negative 2.66 meters for the displacement in the y direction. And I'll write that down in my bookkeeping section here. Negative 2.66 meters just to keep track of everything. Now I said we were gonna find the resultant for all the X components and all the Y components so that it would help us find the resultant. So this is the step where we find the actual resultant 
for this sum of vectors. We're, we're just about to make it simple. What we've done is found all the x values and all the y values, added them all up together. Now that they've been added all up together, we can use the sum of all the x's and the sum of all the y's to make a nice, simple right angle triangle. It's going to be like grade 10 math. Okay? Nice, simple right angle triangle. Now this nice, simple right angle triangle is going to go east 25.09 meters. That's the delta D resultant in the x direction. 25.09 meters. And it's going to go south because negative in the y direction is south. It's going to go south to uh, delta D R in the y direction, 2.66 meters. And so the resultant will be some down at an angle or south, southward at an angle below east. Oh, below is not the right word. Some angle south of east. We would eventually like to know the angle because it is a vector. And of course, we'd like to know the magnitude of the resultant. So if I want to do the magnitude of the resultant first, what's the famous theorem I should use to get the magnitude of the resultant? Pythagorean theorem. Love it. Delta dr is equal to the square root of delta dr in the x direction squared plus delta dr in the y direction squared. <coughs> Sub it in our values. Again, I've taken away that negative sign, not because I don't believe it's there anymore, but because I took care of the negative sign by the direction in which I drew the arrow. Okay, the negative sign still indicates south, but I've drawn this south on the picture, so I don't re-represent it with a negative sign. In any case, I could put the negative 2.66 in as a negative in this calculation. The negative is going to get rid of it anyway, going to get rid of itself by squaring anyway. Negative times a negative is a positive. So, 25.09 meters squared plus 2.66 meters squared. And if I do the calculation, 25.09 squared plus 2.66 squared, um, I think we said earlier that you get 636.58 meters squared. Is there anybody that wants to second that motion? Yes. Yeah, yeah that follows? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to square root it, and that's going to turn the meter squared into meters, but it's also going to turn that big number, 636.58, into 25.23. So now we've got a displacement magnitude of 25.23 meters. And if we're dealing with two significant digits, that's a, I mean, sorry, three significant digits, that's approximately 25. 2 meters. That's not the displacement though, that's just the magnitude in the units. We now need to find the direction because that's a part of the whole story. So if I want to find theta, I know that the two most reliable values on this picture are the opposite and the adjacent because I just calculated the resultant but I might have messed it up. There's a greater chance that the opposite and the adjacent are more correct. So I'm going to use those. If I know the opposite and the adjacent, what's my trig ratio that I'm going to try? Toa, tan theta. Okay. So tan theta is equal to the opposite. This time is delta D resultant in the y direction, and the adjacent is delta D resultant in the x direction. And then we take the tan, and we do a tan inverse on the right-hand side. Tan, uh, theta equals tan inverse... Uh, and I'll, I'll uh, sub in my values now. Um, 2.66 meters. And again, I'm going to ask you to sub in the magnitudes. That means get rid of the negative sign at this stage. We're just going to talk about finding the angle within a triangle, much like you did in math class. So we're just treating these like right angle triangles. 2.66 divided by 25.09 meters. Somebody who's quick on the draw, what's that theta value equal to? 6.05. Is it 6.05 or does it round up? It's 6.05. Is it 6.05? Okay. 
6.05 degrees. So if I want to express this as a final answer, I'd write delta D resultant with an arrow over top is equal to approximately 25.2 meters. And now with my square brackets, how would I start this off? I'm giving somebody directions. Point yourself what direction and then rotate. East. OK, point yourself east and rotate how much? Right. East 6.05 degrees south. Or the other way of writing it would be, starting with the angle, 6.05 degrees to the what of what? South of east. OK? Two alternative ways of saying direction. Ugh. Everybody happy? I like that. OK? Now, that sounds like it's complicated. But let me show you what the alternative would have been. This is going to be real short, OK? The alternative is this. Now, I'm going to take this sheet away. I'll, I'll loan it to anybody that wants it afterwards. The alternative would have been this. Here's a vector that goes up at an angle. Here's a ve vector that goes down at an angle. Here's a vector that goes horizontal at an angle. You tell me, what's that vector? Figure out a way to figure out the magnitude of this thing and the exact angle south of the east. If you can come up with a way to do that, I'm going to give you a prize. But I'm still going to say you can't do it. Okay? But let me tell you one way that some people try to do it. Some people say, hey, if I got a shape that looks like this, here's what I want to do. I'm going to somehow use cosine law with these two vectors only, and I'm going to make a vector that looks like this. And that's going to sort of do away with those two vectors. And then this new vector, this red vector, is going to make a new cosine law triangle with this vector. So, uh, OK, that would be my resultant. And hey, look, that resultant and that resultant are equivalent. And I did it using cosine law twice. But then you got to figure out how to find this exterior angle here relative to the east. What a pain in the butt. And you would be shocked at how many times people get that wrong. Would you be shocked? It, it, it's very easy to mess up. Okay? The way that I've suggested to you is pretty hard to mess up. And although it seems like it's rigorous and takes some time, once you get good at it, it's not so bad. And the real sweetheart thing about it is because it's in X and Y's. It's all X and Y's. Do you think it programs into computers nicely? Yes which is kind of a long-term long game plan, right? Being able to deal with technology in a meaningful way. Cosine law and sine law, not always as easy to deal with uh, in the linear thought process of computer or programming methods of a computer. X's and Y's fit so nicely into things as simple as a spreadsheet. And I tried to exemplify the idea of a spreadsheet here for a reason, because some of this stuff works well with spreadsheets and that kind of linear problem solving. This kind of thing with a cosine law while it's a neat geometric property of vectors that you can apply cosine laws when you have two of them to define a triangle, and then you can have triangles building new triangles and so on, it's not always the easiest, most effective way to solve a problem. Okay, so we're going to abandon that method for this course, and we're going to deal with x's and y components. That's the strategy that I would prefer, and so I'm going to sort of push that.